Travis Wayne Goodsell. Apparently, uh, my uh, cyber attackers last Wednesday were unaware that the prophets even held a meeting to discuss my video of the day because they were gone for two weeks. They all fled the country but are coming back this week. The British guys are coming back. The three Brits were bigger than Jesus. <laughs> I would love to hear them say that. <laughs> if history will repeat itself. <coughs> the Beatles. Hello. <laughs> and I uh, they're still doing that that uh, South American uh, political leader. It's some religious gathering of world religious leaders. And it was back on October 29th. Elder Christofferson was speaking this time around. It's been going on for a while now. It's like a vacation for religious leaders. That they can take one of their five jets that they uh, coerced their members to pay up the, the prosperity gospel money to save them from being struck down by Jesus. Jesus will strike me down if you don't give me money right away for a fifth yacht. Please help me. I don't want to die. You even remember that? <laughs> Did you catch that on the news? Way back when? Dear God. So, Christofferson is, again, going full throttle on pushing religious freedom. They're involved with evangelicals here in the United States of America to push for religious freedom. Because apparently the First Amendment does not cover religious freedom. Apparently, the Constitution divinely inspired by Jesus <laughs> even Christians have Jesus waving the flag at the signing of the Declaration of Independence and I'm sure there's one with him at the constitutional signing <laughs> yes let's pull an anachronism Ever since Constantine, religion has been pulling anachronisms. <laughs> and uh, they weren't Christian, they were deists. <laughs> Hate to break it to you guys. <laughs> when they talked about God, they weren't talking about Jesus. But, yeah, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints that even has canonized scripture of how wonderful the Constitution is, except for the slavery part. Yeah, it even says, except for the slavery part. <coughs> Finally inspired. And yet, the prophets of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints think it's a good idea to destroy the Constitution and impose a segregated law for religions all by its lonesome. As if they don't have enough power with all their trillions upon trillions of dollars of wealth. Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The uh, evangelicals are just millionaires, multi-millionaires. Petty cash. He says, one, I'm going off of the church news. I'm not going to read every single thing, just the top, the 
six or so topics. Religious liberty is the oldest freedom. <laughs> uh, are you uh, imposing this onto history? In international human rights law. Oh, God. Yeah. Catholics imposed it. <laughs> the Catholic Church has freedom. Spanish Inquisition. <clears throat> Muslims with Islam and the scorched earth conversion policy. Join us or we burn your village and you die. And then we erect a, a mosque on top of the ruins of Jerusalem. Yeah, that kind of international human rights. Uh -huh. Two, religious liberty is essential for protecting human dignity. You mean those of the religious leadership's dignity. Because when the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints refuses to take care of the poor and needy. Oh no, I know that my local ward, Travis, has a bishop and, and he gives to people. I know them. How many poor people are in Utah? Do you know that they count every year for just one day? So if they miss some that are out hiding somewhere, For 2019, on a single night, it even says it, on a single night in Utah, in 2019, so did they not do it for 2020 because of the virus? Wait a minute, here we go. As of January 2020, Utah had an estimated, wow, in 2019, it was 2,798 persons were homeless in Utah. And how many did the road home house? 1,100. And in 2019, and then they tore it down, built three new shelters for 700 bed capacity. 700. So for 2020, the count, they did it in January apparently, 3,131. And again, that's a low number because that's only those that they counted in a fixed location that they knew they were in. We have tent cities out in the forested mountains and, and scattered all over the place because of Operation Rio Grande. So how is the church protecting their human dignity with their religious freedom? Three. Religious liberty promotes pluralism and peace. Really? Join our church or we call you apostate, antichrist, Korahor. <laughs> Is that the peace you're talking about? Are you sure? Classical purism, pluralism, is the view that politics and decision making are located mostly in the framework of government. 
religious pluralism promotes pluralism plural pluralism <clears throat> so religious freedom allows the religions to establish their own administration and governance And how is that related to peace? <laughs> respect begets respect. How is the church respected blacks? How is the church respected women? How is the church respected LGBTQIAPO plus? How has the church respected the poor? Again, 3,000. Did you watch uh, John Oliver's show last night? Or at least my video? You can click on the link in the description below on that video to catch up. Religious liberty facilitates a proper segregation of the races. <laughs> Separation of church and state. What? The church is planning to take over the United States of America and all other countries. <laughs> Did you not hear the whistleblower from Ensign Peak Advisors? He was specifically told they're stocking up on money in the tithing and other investments for the second coming and Armageddon. <laughs> They're saving the money to rule the world. The First Presidency even came out with a First Presidency statement after the whistleblower. I bet I can find it through a Google search rather than searching on the church's site. <clears throat> LDS First Presidency Statement on the disposition of tithes. KUTV. Uh, it's 1986. See, that KUTV is the one. And that's the Wikipedia on the Council of the Dispensa Disposition of Tithes. Seriously, you're making me go to KUTV and hope that they have a link to the church's site. Nope, you just quote them. <laughs> but they do have the whistleblower and his YouTube link. Is it the, oh, yep, it's a seven minute one, not the over an hour long, more detailed version. Mormon leaves. LDS Church connected to at least 32 billion in U.S. stock market. Is that from the whistleblower? Huh. I'm going to need to click on this. <laughs> oh good, it created a separate tab. Huh. When was this? This was 2008. Ah, yeah, yeah, I know that one. I know that one. Max Roth from Fox 13 News, Utah. <coughs> that has a YouTube video for it, so I, I know that one. I've been using it in videos if you hadn't been paying attention all these years. So, pay attention. The first presidency stated, and I don't believe they... I can't... Why don't they have a link? They have... Uh, Church states on its website that it has a singular purpose. Huh, oh, picture's gone. Newsroom, Church of Jesus Christ dot org. Huh. Oh. It was twenty two May two thousand eighteen. That's weird. Why has the 
picture of God. <laughs> anyway, it says, we take seriously the responsibility to care for the people, right? No. For the money. For the tithes and donations received from members. Ah, my precious. <laughs> the vast majority of these funds are used immediately to meet the needs of the growing church, including more meeting houses, temples, education, humanitarian work, and missionary efforts throughout the world. You're not talking about the extra funds set aside into the LLC corporations, into the stock market. You're talking about the money that gets used. Over many years, a portion is methodolic method method methodically uh, safeguarded through wise financial management and the building of a prudent reserve for the future 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 this is a sound doctrinal and listen to the seven minutes he talks about the future second coming and Armageddon it's against the law <laughs> you're not supposed to get tax exempt status if that's what you're using the money for <laughs> but pay attention here he comes the one I've been mocking ever since. This is a sound doctrinal and financial principle taught by the Savior. <laughs> In the parable of the times. <laughs> is not to be taken literally. <laughs> oh my god! <sighs> breathe. Breathe. <laughs> Hold back the tears. <laughs> These are religious leaders pushing for religious freedom above and beyond the Constitution. <laughs> And their justification for amassing multi-trillions of dollars is the parable of the talents. <laughs> talents are a parable for souls going to heaven. It's that simple. Anybody can figure that out. And yet, oh, we amass large amounts of money because of the parable of the talents. Because a talent is a form of money back during the Roman period. And <laughs> Jesus is the Lord of the vineyard or the nobleman in that past parable. And he gives certain amounts of talents to each and every single person. And they're supposed to invest by going into the city and sell the stock market. This isn't an anachronism. They had a stock market back then, exactly like the one we use today. <laughs> and the one with five <laughs> was rewarded and was allowed to continue at the second coming. <laughs> he got his money back. <laughs> you need to have your lawyers read this to you and correct the information. <laughs> or at least the spokesman or somebody who knows anything about religion and scripture to correct this. Oh my God, the leaders of the church, the only true church on the face of the earth, led by Jesus himself. <laughs> Watch this. 
<laughs> he has the one talent guy. Oh, I hid my talent in the ground to protect it. <laughs> and didn't save a single soul. <laughs> Now do you understand why he was cast out to outer darkness? Oh dear God! <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, see, here's the bullying tactic. Oh, how dare you speak out against us, religious freedom? <laughs> Claims being currently circulated are based on narrow perspective and limited information. <laughs> Love to insult people. It's hilarious. But that's what happens when you get exposed. <laughs> you resort to name calling and abusive speech. And the prophets teach this to Mormons. Dear God. We comply. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> It's because you haven't been found guilty in a court of law yet. It's an outright blatant crime and you need to be locked up. Just like the FLDS. You hear that? FLDS got first busted by the federal government for snap fraud violations. It's a government benefit given to people and they blew it. The women, polygamous women, would get the SNAP benefits for food money, give it to the bishops, and then the bishops would redistribute the food purchased from the SNAP card to mostly them, as the women and children kind of suffered that way. But uh, nonetheless, SNAP benefits go for the people that it's given to, not those that it's not given to. They did not put the bishop or their husband on the registering for the SNAP benefits. They can't because <laughs> the government would find out, hey, uh, bigamy, that's against the law. <laughs> We're not granting you SNAP benefits. Sorry. And so, yeah, SNAP fraud violations. Church does that too with Social Security benefits from the government. People have to pay tithing. It's not a donation. It's not a membership fee. It's a protection racket. It's a crime. And the church wants religious freedom to commit crime. But the FLDS church got busted. LDS church not busted. Why? And so last week, the FLDS church got busted again. Now that they're no longer allowed SNAP benefits, <laughs> they've decided, hey, we'll get more labor out in the fields by putting the children to work. Oops! Child labor violations! So yeah, this time, uh, the brother of Warren Jeffs, who's not in jail, they, they wanted to lock up the leader, let the other guys go if they uh, testified against the leader. And so the brother of Warren Jeffs is now in charge, and he's the one that got served by the federal government with a fine of almost a million dollars for the child slave labor that they got going on there. So good luck for them getting the million dollars to pay that off. I bet they won't. But, uh, yeah, the church, likewise. When do you start paying tithing? I was going over it yesterday and realized, oh yeah, the uh, savings and loan went bust, because that was the, something related to the savings and loan going bust came to my mind. And I remember, yeah, I used to have a savings and loan account where I'd put my allowance and and lawn mowing money, and I worked for my dad at his office, child slave labor, <laughs> and other jobs that my dad would put me to work on, and uh, I tried to sell lemon, uh, was it lemonade? It might have been lemonade, can't remember. But I had a, a, a jar 
of jelly beans and I had people guess the amount and whoever was the closest would get it. Well, my sister would have none of that <laughs> and told my mom that I was going to rig it <laughs> and take the, the jelly beans for myself. <laughs> and so my mom came out, oh, I'm taking control. Religious parental freedom. <laughs> and so that business went to pot. So, now, yeah, I, mean, I realized, okay, I'm not doing this anymore. I might as well go back to my room. But yeah, I had $300. And apparently it was all lost because uh, my parents surprised me on the first wedding ceremony saying, oh, we got this $300, do you want it left in the stock market through, it was the priest quorum advisor, he worked for an LLC company or some kind, and had invested my parent money that the church, or my parents, paid out because of the loss of the savings and loan, and so it was $300, and I'm going, uh, yeah, I'll just take it. <laughs> I'm not likely to make trillions upon billions of dollars from the stock market, so, yeah, I, which means $300, I paid $30 as a kid in tithing to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. My labor as a child, given to the church, 10%. <clears throat> That's child labor law violations. Again, a crime. The FLDS church keeps getting busted for their crimes. Why isn't the LDS church getting busted for their crimes? Hmm. Could it be that the state of Utah is run by Mormons? Of the LDS church, and not the FLDS church? Yeah, yeah, and so the federal government is clueless, and it takes whistleblowers, and apparently it even takes more than that to get them to do anything, because, dear God, YouTube won't even take down their channels when they incite to violence and death, so yeah, there ain't no separation of church and state. They want to rule the world, literally. <sighs> so number five. I'll try not to laugh so hard on this one. I busted up laughing the first time around I read this. <laughs> Religious liberty allows for the provision of critical services to society. And its most disadvantaged members. Oh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has a shelter like the Catholic Church does here in Utah? <laughs> the Church... <laughs> nope. Nope. They have bishop storehouses, but you got to go through your bishop. And so if you're not a Mormon... Oh, oops. <laughs> no food for you. Come back next week. Or next year. What was it? It was Friends, right? The Nazi, soup Nazi guy? Dear God. Yeah. Church Nazis. Literally. Morona and the swastika. Let me get the author for you. Do -do -do -do. Moroni and the Swastika, Mormons in Nazi Germany, hardcover. Um, um, David Conley Nelson, he even has YouTube videos, he does lectures, going over the book material. Adolf's Hit well, what had that? While Adolf Hitler's National Socialist Government 
And that was the front to get elected. <laughs> he turned fascist. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> was persecuting Jews and Jehovah's Witnesses and driving 42 small German religious sects underground, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints prospered. Uh, continue to practice unhindered. Hmm. And so, yeah, there were uh, Mormons that did try to protect and help the Jews, and the church punished them. Yay! Church is so true, led by Jesus, freedom! Huh? and its most disadvantaged members. The church does nothing. This is what they do. They talk the words to other people to follow, but they themselves, even among other religious leaders, they themselves will not practice what they are preaching. They are corrupt to the core. And then sex. Religious liberty enables all to freely pursue truth about church history. <laughs> right? No. Nope. <laughs> Stay away from doubters and apostates and lazy learners and intellectuals. <laughs> read what we give you to read. Stay off social media. <sighs> yep, just like Nazis. And the meaning of life to serve us. <sighs> the meaning of life. Da -da -da. The best road and to live accordingly, and I call BS, B, capital B, capital S. So yeah, this is what the church is up to. They plan on taking over the world, and they're pushing religious freedom. We'll see if I can find a constitution thing for you. Thumbnail.